Hello everyone and welcome to another video, it's Francesco here. So what we'll be doing in this review is focusing on to do for Mac. Now I've reviewed the to do application for iPhone before and since I did that they've actually released a new Android app and also their Mac application which we'll be focusing on today has become more advanced. Now this is one of the more pricey, more advanced to-do list applications on the market. So let's get stuck into what the to-do for Mac can actually do. So let's start by focusing on some of the core functions in the application. So the brilliant thing that they sort of give away to you at the start is that this can be used in any way you like. You can follow a strict GTD system, or you can actually focus on really basic systems like you know simply creating tasks and setting them up. This sort of layout and the way that they do this make it really easy to do so. So on the left hand side you've got this sort of focus area which we'll explain in a minute uh, and that's once you add context to all of your tasks. But when you're starting out you need to create these things called lists. You can create a list by simply hitting this plus button here and a list will be added to the left hand side. Within a list, you can actually create a multitude of different functions. So you can actually obviously add new tasks, and as I'll mention later, there is keyboard shortcuts to this because there are so many advanced features. You can add projects, which is a neat way of organizing, which I'll show you in a second. And also you can add a checklist. This is a new feature as well. So once you create a project, you get this sort of briefcase icon indicating how many, project, how many tasks are inside of that project. Now this is a neat way to sort of organize your list and as you can see, maybe I have two or three projects going on at one given time. So below all that project you can add tasks and obviously add context to those tasks which is quite a useful asset to have. Now you can also create these checklist icons and as you can see these icons are slightly different but as you click in you can obviously add notes uh, to each of these. You've also got this thing called smart list at the bottom where once you create one of these smart lists you can add a certain sorting function to them to give you some more context on all of your tasks. So as you can see these are the next three days worth of tasks and we'll showcase all of those tasks that are coming up in the next three days. There is another ability to add different types of groups as well so you can add list groups which is an interesting new way to coordinate some of your lists. They're almost like stacks on Evernote. You can simply create new lists and new smart lists down in the bottom left hand corner near the calendar. So there is a calendar feature down at the bottom and if you see, you can see certain like dots on all of the icons which is pretty cool. This indicates that you've got tasks for that day and if I click on the third, I can see all of the items that I have for that day and even recurring ones that obviously appear every single day. Up in the top left hand corner you've obviously got focus, all essentially showcases everything you've got going on at any given time. This is a great way to see everything at a glance. Today obviously coordinates everything that you're working on today. Starred allows you to see all of the starred features that you have, all of the focus tasks, and scheduled allows you to see all of the items that have been specifically scheduled for later. Done is another feature that I think a lot of other applications should include, which allows you to see all of the completed tasks over a period of time. So let's move on to the sort of task side of things. So there's lots of things you can do with the tasks element of the application. As you can see, I've created a few examples here. So this one is reply to all YouTube comments and let's say this is a recurring task. You can hover over here and actually change specifically the given period you chose for this application to recur it. This is a nice way and you can also even change it some of the days and also some of the presets that they have on the application. So as you can see within this sort of mini window you get with each of the tasks, you can actually change the list that it's based in, which is pretty cool. Whether you're gonna attach a picture to it, any audio notes as well, which is pretty handy, any locations which could be important for later. From here, you can choose an action. So here, for example, if I had mail, I can actually type in my own email address and what will happen is whenever I go to complete that task and I click onto that task, it'll actually associate it to that email and get started. You also have alerts here. You can actually create an alarm with a sound or a message or go through some of the presets based on the previous times. This is a nice feature down on the right hand side. You can set a duration for each of the tasks, which is a great way to see at a glance whether you can complete that in the period of time. You can also see when it starts and when it's due, which is a slightly different feature to some of the other applications out there. And you can actually attach tags over here 
you can actually drag in civic tags, which is a great way to do it with speed. Down here, you can obviously add short notes, which is a great way to organize. As you go outside of this, you can actually assign a priority level to it. Uh, that line cross through means basically there's no priority. Uh, one, two, and three priority, three being the most important, and star will make it appear inside of this box here. So as you can imagine, you can add subtasks to all of the tasks that you already have. You can add these tags, as I mentioned before, just by creating them up here. And it's very simple to create something called a tag group. Once you create a tag group, you can actually assign it to a specific set of tags. As you can see, I made one for energy levels and have indicated all the energy levels I could use. Once driving them on, it becomes super simple to associate any of the tasks and is a great way to organize that. I really like the feature where you can add locations as well. So if I hover over and drag it there, I can actually have uh, specific uh, locations and organize that for later. So if I wanted to search at the top for uh, a task associated to Exeter, I can see all of those tasks at a glance. Within the actual task area, you can actually separate and sort them based, filter them based on the modification date, the priority lists, uh, start date, creation, anything you want really, even duration. So I can set this based on duration, and as you can see, it's brought up a list of the priority of duration. So if I just tap on the projects, I can actually get up the ability to exclude from all and exclude from today. Now this could be a good way when you create a list and you don't want it to appear in any of the um, setup boxes, the focusing boxes, that's a great way of sorting that out. So from anywhere, I can simply press the Control M button and quick add a new task to the bottom of a list. Now that's a great way and especially a handy way when you're trying to add tasks in very quickly. Up here in the top right hand corner you can actually search in great detail. Search anything you like, so if I search YouTube and as you can see this sorting priority feature. You can also use this focus feature as well which uh, sort of coordinates it on date uh, and priority which is great. Uh, and you can also see all of the tasks that are hidden here. Now when you're creating a certain task, you can actually schedule it. So if you go and right click on the task, you get obviously get all of these fantastic um, settings. So if you learn the keyboard settings, there's obviously a lot of functions. From up here, you can actually turn it into a project or a checklist. Uh, you can mark it as complete from up here. Uh, and there's a host of other features. But the one thing I wanna focus on is using K, which is the schedule. So you can actually schedule a task for later. So if I schedule this for tomorrow, uh, it disappears from that list. Now this is a great way to sort of coordinate things because if I go here, I can see all of the scheduled ones and it will appear at that time, but it won't appear in my lists. Now this is a great way and something that I wish something like Todoist would have so I can help sort of coordinate activities without necessarily seeing ones um, that I don't necessarily need at a given time. Now there are a host of other features inside of the settings and you can actually go up to the top bar and actually use these and I would recommend just learning them. You can change anything from the font size um, to all of the layouts uh, that to do actually have. There is a sync feature up here which actually syncs, the syncs it with uh, your actual device which is pretty handy. But the thing I wanted to look at is the preferences. So the preferences is one of the core features to actually customizing this. Quick entry can be like added here. And up here you can actually have a GTD inbox installed. And once you enable this feature, an inbox will appear in the top left hand corner as a collect item. Now this is an awesome feature once you've activated it because it just makes it look so great. So you can obviously change appearance up here, uh, more advanced appearance and uh, just a simple appearance here. There's not really much that you can do. You can't change the theme or anything like that. There's also security as well. So you can actually set a password on most of the different items and also organize the privacy on all of them so that if you share them out, then it's something that you help coordinate. There's also backups so you can actually organize it. Uh, the backups for to be like downloaded to the computer every certain period of time. And you also sync it with a service like Dropbox Reminders, Frux, Yahoo Calendar and Todoodle or a CalDAV service. Now there's also advanced features which also indicate more detail uh, inside here and also like the, the default uh, features and also a uh, diagnostic there. Now I'm not sure whether you'll be jumping into those features but I really suggest over time to be looking at those because they are a pretty uh, deep experience. When you've set this up in an efficient way 
uh, this could be really like a powerhouse of data mining uh, that you can use at any given time. So when it comes to looking at getting to do for your task management needs, you'd have to be looking for a much more advanced experience. Now this is something very similar to uh, obviously OmniFocus, which is sort of the GTD go-to. Uh, I would say this is slightly more visually impressive and easier to follow. So it's definitely worth taking a look at when you're trying to look at a sort of more sophisticated tool for getting tasks done. Now the pricing for this is Mac is currently $49.99 available for your Mac device and obviously you can have that across five um, other Mac devices which I doubt you'd ever uh, need and also you've got a iOS application which is an in-app purchase to GoPro at $20. Now the Android application is another one, obviously these are all free to download but as soon as you go in there's obviously a payment gate and the Android app is $9.99. Now that pricing is always changing so I'm going to be including a link in the description to some of the pricing and information. So I hope you found this video useful, obviously I'll be sharing some of the more tip focused stuff in the future and also some more opinions I have on this. Overall, I think it's a really solid application that deserves a bit of attention because I reviewed a couple of year, maybe a year ago from now, and it's done incredibly well to get an Android app and a much more advanced Mac app out in that period of time. They are always updating and it seems like a really sophisticated way to organize, which I would recommend to any freelancers or professionals out there. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos and I'm looking forward to sharing some more features with you in the near future. Anyway guys, have a great week, keep productive and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers. Thank you.